This is a question that has a potential meter and a potential divider. Potential meter? Potential divider and a bridge. Ooh, ooh, wow. Okay, okay, hang on first. Come on. Let's zoom in and read the question. Okay, so right now we have a uniform resistance wire XY of length 100 cm connected in series with a cell. Okay, this must cell. The other cell M, okay, the one down here, M. This is your M. Whoops. Okay, we're back. This is your M. Okay, it's connected in series with the resistor 4, 10, 15. Okay, so it's connected this way. Lah. Right, next. The potential divider between P and Q is balanced. Okay, my favorite word is balance, as all things should be balanced. Means that there is current is 0 ampere in the ammeter. Okay, ammeter reading is 0. Mm. Very nice. Potential difference across the other resistor is then balanced against the length of the resistance wire. Okay, so basically, I just got to adjust this one. Lah. So I put it at 5 ohm. I adjust until I get zero reading. Okay, and then I can put it at different, different connection points and then I adjust to get zero reading. Which balance length of resistance wire corresponds to the connection point given in the table? Okay, let me crop the table and put it near the circuit first. So what the question wants from us is to figure out what is the new balance length when I take this connection Q and then I put it R or I put it S or I put it Q and R. You know, this P and Q can change, uh, can connect at different across different different resistors. Okay, one by one first. Uh, let us settle the circuit M first. Or in other words, let me settle this loop first. This loop. Okay. So this is M. And I know that the uh, potential of M uh, will be shared evenly across 5, 10, and 15. Now, I don't know what the potential is, but I know the ratio. You no? Know? V is proportional to R. So I can say that, let's say the potential drop here because, you know, the current will flow this from S to P. Ma. Okay, So let's say the potential drop here is V. 5 ohm is V. 10 ohm will be 2V. 15 ohm will be 3V. Can I don't know what V is. I can count. Okay. okay this V here is unknown. Or if you want to, you can put this one at 6 volt. Lah. Okay, whichever works for you. Okay, so this is 1V, 2V, 3V. Because the ratio of resistance is 5, 10, 50. Okay, so if you connect this between Q and S, let's see, where is Q and S? Oh, so when we connect between Q and S, Q is here, S is here. The total drop is 5 volt. So V, hey wait, Q and S, sorry, 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 Q and R, my bad. Q and R. VQR is uh, 2 volts or 2V. Okay. So 1V is 12.5. Let me write that down also. VPQ, V from P to Q is 1V. And the length is 12.5 cm. So when it's 2V, what should be the length for QR? 12.5 times 2, long. that would be 25 cm. Yeah. So A is out. Okay. You may be thinking, can use ratio like that? Ah? Can ah? Because for current, for balance reading to be zero, okay, we have done this so many times already. Let's say this point here is the point of contact, J. Vxj must be the same as V, whatever I connect between here to here. If it's PQ, then it's PQ. Okay? But also at the same time, Vxj is equal to I resistance of X to J. 
Remember your potential meter? And resistance from X to J is proportional to length. The longer the length, the, long, the larger the resistance. The larger the resistance, the greater the Vxj. So from these two I put together, I get Vxj is proportional to L. If Vxj is proportional to L, then this one here, your VPQ, because they are equal, so VPQ is also proportional to L. So when I change the resistance of PQ, I mean, just by connecting at different, different locations, I am proportional, proportional to L because of this. It's important at this point in time to know that most of the time it is proportional until it is not. So it's useful to identify when it's proportional and when it is not, okay? But in this case, it is. So right now, if I put it at this one, QR, it's 25C. Okay, next, QS. QS is here to here, which looks like 5. So VQS is equal to 5. So if 1 is 12.5, then 5 would be 12.5 times 5. This is 62.5. Okay, so this is... All right. And finally, we put it between P and R. If you're looking at P and R, we are talking about a drop of 3 volts. Okay. So V P R is equal to 3 V. So then the length will be equal to 12.5 times 3, which is 37.5 cm. Yeet. So the answer here is B. B. Okay. So what's the takeaway here? Number one, whenever we share resistance, I mean, whenever there's resistance placed in series like this, this is potential divider. They are sharing potential in proportion to their resistance. So first proportionality relationship that we use is V is proportional to R. V can be unknown, or if you don't want to deal with unknowns, you just let M be equal to 6 volt low now. 1, 2, 3. Because the ratio is 5, 10, 50. Okay? The second thing is, at balance length, Xj is equal to PQ. Balance. Okay, if xj is equal to pq, and the third thing to note is, so this is number one, this is number two, number three is a proportionality relationship, okay, which is vxj is proportional to length, because length is proportional to resistance, hence potential per unit length, okay. So if xj is proportional to length, and xj is equal to pq, so pq is proportional to length. Meaning to say, if the potential drop is V and the length is 12.5, when the potential drop is 2V, then the L will be 12.5 times 2. When the potential drop is 3V, there will be 12.5 times 3. And you see, though, wherever they connect P to Q, R, P to R, R P to S, R, yeah, you know what to do. Lah. All right? So this why it's not that complicated. Try it out. I'll see you in the next question. Don't worry about it. It's just dropping, dropping, dropping potential and then measuring across two different things. All right, I'll see you. Bye-bye. Stay sane.